Living a life of abundance is constantly feeling like your cup is being filled. Not necessarily because you won the lottery. Not necessarily uh, because uh, your daughter got accepted into that, you know, college that she's been wanting to go to. But just little bitty soul-serving nuggets that happen throughout the day. Tina Washington, founder and CEO of She, ventured into entrepreneurship in 2015 after taking the courageous step to leave her job to pursue her dream. She created and founded the She Event Indy, a not-for-profit organization focused on providing opportunities, tools, and resources to help connect, grow, and scale over 500 Black-owned businesses to help create legacies throughout the community. Katina is a visionary leader that opened and operated the first Black department store in Circle Center Mall in Indianapolis, the She Experience Shops. She is the host of the Katina Washington Show and author of the newly released memoir, Becoming Ho, Journey to Authenticity. Katina Washington's success and mission has been built on the African Ubuntu philosophy, I am because we are. Welcome back to the Finally Be Podcast. Oh my goodness, I have such a dynamic person on the podcast today. Um, let me just say this. When I first encountered this individual, I was in shock because the energy flow that came off of her was so unique to her being herself. And if if you were to speak with her or talk to her, you could just have such a quick connection. And I did have a really quick connection with this woman. She not only um, shows us a way to kind of look into ourselves and be able to be capable of the more and to kind of not just be reaching for things, but recognize that you can live today the life that you really want to. And all you have to do is really just open your eyes to it and take those steps towards it. And so I wanted her all in the podcast because that is the pinnacle of what we need right now is somebody to say, this is who I am and this is who I get to be and I choose it every day. So I just want you guys to know that I just want you to get to know her, you know, like I want to get to know her even more. This is Miss Katina Washington. Hi. Thanks, Carol. Thank you, thank you, thank you for such a warm welcome. Uh, first of all, your hair is the bomb. Oh, thank you. <laughs> right there. Yeah, I love, love, love your hair. It's always really pretty and always well groomed and just looks healthy all the time. So that's really refreshing to see. Thank you. Thank you for um being interested in me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, um, it's nice to receive, you know, invitations for things like this, you know, but especially when part of your story uh, includes a lot of times when you're looked over or ignored or, you know, things like that. So thank you. I really appreciate moments like this. The more people that get introduced to people like you, they're able to see themselves doing something different. You know, it's not just about being a motto because a lot of times we dream in copies. You know, we dream and copy. So we're dreaming about being Oprah or being this person over here. And we're not recognizing they're dreaming about themselves. <laughs> you know exactly, what I'm saying? Exactly. Exactly. They're saying to themselves that this is who I am today. And all I got to do is make those choices to Absolutely. be exactly who I want to be. And getting closer to you and knowing that you're doing these amazing things, people can <laughs> see somebody who is an example that you're not just opening doors for people that people can see they can open their own doors, you know? And so, Absolutely. so appreciative of you being here. So let's get right into it. <laughs> Tell <laughs> us what is your origin story? Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> that, that can be very complex and long. <laughs> to talk about my origin uh, story, but I come from... Like a lot of people, 
humble beginnings. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Humble beginnings. But um, at the same time, um, I was blessed by a lot of the, uh, by being amongst a lot of like powerful women. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I think all of us can look back and say, you know, maybe grandma or mama or somebody may have needed a little more guidance or something like that. But also there was a group of powerful women, you know, that we've been around to help us give us guidance. You know what I'm saying? It could be like for me, you know, when I was younger, there was a lady who sat next to me in church that I really admired, you know? So you grab some of her class and stuff like that from her. Then you got this other person over here, you know, like the bootleg cab when I was growing up. So they were, you know, I love the entrepreneur spirit in them. You know, they just didn't have the technology, right? To be an Uber or Lyft, right? And, and just, grabbing things from different people I saw and I don't even know if they really even saw the power in themselves or how they were influencing me you know at a really young age but I have to say yeah I had a lot of trials and tribulations humble beginnings but I I was born into a family of uh really strong women what does it mean to be a strong woman um um, um, and, and this may be looked at as, um, maybe not a positive thing, but being a strong woman, woman to me means, uh, carrying a lot of weight. It means a lot of layers. It means, um, um, a lot of taboo. It means, uh, putting a picture over the hole in the wall. It means never really addressing things, just continuing on in life. Or, you know, some people may look at it as a situation where you're on the treadmill and you really ain't going nowhere. You just feel like you are. You know what I'm saying? Um, But that's what a strong woman means to me. Um, A strong woman means a heavy woman to me. I'm sorry. I want to make sure. (laughs) I'm sorry someone's going back here. But yeah. I, that's what that means to me. It sounds like you're saying that it means to carry the weight of others, to make sure that you are setting yourself up for a life that you actually want to live, even if you don't ever get there. And you just yeah. push it. So how yeah. did you keep, what did you have to push through in your life? Uh, some of the things I had to push through in my life, I just realized uh, here recently is like, my capacity, you know, uh, some of the things I, I pushed through in life are, are uh, uh, domestic violence, um, um, at a young age, at a very young age, at the age of 16. So we think that, well, not we think, but some people think domestic violence is like an adult thing. Uh, and there are youth that are going through that, you know, some, um, youth learn that behavior at a young age and, um, and act it out, you know, act out on that. And um, I don't think we really realize uh, how much it happens, mm-hmm. you know, uh, in our communities. It definitely happened to me at the age of 16. And actually, I, um, yeah, I endured uh, some things from the domestic violence that I will have to deal with for the rest of my life, you know, damage to myself, you know, that I have to deal with. And I'm not talking about just the mental part of it. Like, yeah, there's things about my physical that happened to me that will permanently be a scar for me, you know, for the rest of my life. So, I mean, it's not like, you know, it's uh, a situation where, you know, it's a small cut or something, you know, that just goes away after time or something like that. Yeah, I have physical damage that I will have to look in the mirror and see for the rest of my life, you know. So that's one of the things that I push through. Um, and, um, I'm just, I'm, I'm 51 years old. I'll be 52 in June of this year. And just now getting to a point where I can really talk about it without it being so painful, you know, and where I don't feel like I have to continue to carry this load. So now I'm at a time in my life where, 
it's like that heavy woman is kind of rising because she's pulling back these layers and, and she's being lifted. You know what I mean? I always talk about in the energy work, it's like, I always talk about layers in our being. There's okay. layers that you that's being revealed every day. Like you're always and has always been the person that you wanted to be and that you were meant to be. But to peel back those layers takes work. It takes you being more and more aware yeah. of yourself and what you're capable of and what what your capacity is. And Absolutely. For me, I just wanted to know, dealing with all of those things that you struggled through and all those things that you pushed through, how did you get to that place where you could see yourself differently and begin to take those steps forward? Absolutely. Um uh, uh, one time uh, that I can actually say that I really saw myself differently was during my sabbatical. I took a month sabbatical in November of this year, and um, I would suggest that to anyone that has the opportunity to do so. But I took a sabbatical, and during that sabbatical, I really saw who I was, you know, um, spending a, a month alone, no phone, no social media. Yeah, you get to about the second week, I was talking to myself, right? And I got <laughs> to know who I was and um, my purpose, you know what I'm saying? And just taking time to just enjoy peace. And what I mean by t peace is not just complete quietness, but what I mean by peace is not feeling stressed to like get up, go to work, take the kids on a field trip, do this, do that, do the other. You know what I'm saying? Just taking time out for yourself to learn who you are authentically, mm -hmm. you know? And that's, um, that is what inspired me to write the book that I just wrote, uh, living about living authentically. Um, because it wasn't until that time in November that I really took time to travel back into my childhood and my origin wow. and really learn who I was. You know, why do you do this? Why do you keep trying to use flour over and over again? Okay, that's because mama did it. That's one of the layers of stress that I have. Because I'm like, okay, well, I don't have to keep using a flour over and over again. You know, if I've been blessed and put in a position where I can purchase another $2 bag of flour, then I don't have to stress about trying to save it forever and ever and ever. You know what I'm saying? And then we got to, when I say capacity, that's understanding that circumstances can change. Because, you know, circumstances impact people's uh, decisions. Mm -hmm. So when we learn that about ourselves and, you know, um, and it becomes our guide to making decisions, um, it it all runs together, right? It all runs together and it just makes so much sense, you know, after you really think about it and analyze everything and you're like, okay, yeah, sometimes um, things are, or people are good at what used to work. It doesn't necessarily mean it works now. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you have to adjust and change and then tap into yourself to see, you know, is that what I want? Mm -hmm. You know, is that what I want? Yeah. That understanding of getting to that place of asking yourself that question, that goes into that place of being honest about what it is. Mm -hmm. and who. We, we always talk about being our authentic self. We always talk about who I am, right? But we don't actually embrace that. All of this is a part of our experience. All of this is who you are. It's just yeah. you decided and choosing what you get to look like today and what you get to look like tomorrow. And mm -hmm. when you say that, that you're just pulling it all together to be able to see yourself even more, to see where, you know, that conditioned self came from. Why do I keep doing this? Why do I do that? You're just absolutely that you're making you you've copied things that you didn't want to copy and now you're discovering for yourself that you can make another choice you can choose something right. differently and i think that's the thing that people miss a lot and avoid a lot is that they think they're trapped in the circumstance that they've created for themselves or in the circumstance that's being presented to them and 
that takes a lot of trust to learn that. So how did you get to that place where you decided that you were going to be not just honest with yourself, but the trust to make a different decision? Um, um, you have to own your life. You have to make a decision to own your life. Own your day, own your hour, own your minute, your second, you know what I'm saying? And then it really makes you look at almost every aspect of your life and say, okay, am I doing this because this is something that feeds my soul or something that's good for me? Or am I doing this out of habit? Am I doing this because my friends do it? My mom did it. My grandma did it. You know, what? what is it? about me that makes me continuously do something that I don't really enjoy, mm. you know? So we look inside of ourselves and say, you know, let's find the root of that. And then when we make a decision to let go of certain things, you have to like disconnect from everything that's an extension of that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So if I decide, you know, I don't want friends like such and such. What she does it doesn't make me feel good. You know, it makes me feel this and it makes me feel that. And that, that's, that's not working for me. It's not serving me anymore. So what you have to do is you have to disconnect. That's part of the healing process. Is just, No, you're not mad. You're not holding a grudge or anything like that. You just realize this is something that's not serving me right now. And so therefore, I, I have to disconnect from this. What and everything mean? connected with it. <laughs> what does it mean when you say it's not serving you? Um, what I say is it not, it's not serving me is, okay, for an example, if I attend my family gathering and every single time that I go, yeah, I have a good time, but oh, there's this one moment where that family member just comes over to me and just says something that just totally catches me off guard because we got to realize too we all have gifts right yes we and do. sometimes that per we all have gifts no matter how good or bad you are we all have gifts and maybe that person who pushes your blood in or you know takes you off or whatever maybe their gift is to see great things in people mm -hmm. and sometimes maybe they may see something in you that you don't yet see in yourself right and um um, what I mean by not serving me is because I don't have to subject myself to going into places where I'm, I'm, I'm tolerated instead of celebrated. And so, no, this isn't serving me anymore. So I'm sorry. I love you, but I cannot attend your function anymore because I go with my cup full. And by the time I leave after talking to you, it's halfway full and I still got the rest of the day to go. Right. <laughs> So, yeah, making those detrimental, you know, uh, decisions for yourself. Mm -hmm. So in all of that, you, you're being honest with yourself. You're uh, revealing more and more about you. You're seeing your capacity for more. How do you get to that place where you're living your life of purpose? Yeah, um, living a life of purpose is being your authentic self. Mm -hmm being your authentic self. Sometimes we feel like, oh, we have to have 10, 11, 12 best friends and things like that. What if you spent more time and focus more on those two or three friends you have? You know what I'm saying? And living an authentic life. One time when I was younger, I told my grandma, I'm like, Oh, those people down the street, they won't play with me. You know, they, they're ignoring me today and all of that. And my grandma's like, well, look behind you. And I look behind me and there's my two friends who are there all the time to play with me. So I'm wasting so much time, right? Trying to make someone else be friends with me when I can just spend time with the two I got right now <laughs> and be from that. You know what I'm saying? So it's just a matter of just being more conscious, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. uh, in the decisions that we make and just more aware of the things that are around us right now. One of our principal powers that we're blessed to have and every person has is a creator energy power where if we start observing our life as God sees us. 
we can right. see more things that are around us that's available to us that we're allowed to tap into. I, I love the fact that you're in this place in your life and it sounds like this has been your journey for quite some time of recognizing more and more of yourself, more of the things that, that you love and more of the things you want more of. Um, absolutely, you, absolutely. You're living this life of more abundance, right? What does that mean for you to live a life of abundance? Living a life of abundance is constantly feeling like your cup is being filled. Mm. Not necessarily because you won the lottery, not necessarily uh, because uh, your daughter got accepted into that, you know, college that she's been wanting to go to, <laughs> but just little bitty soul serving nuggets that happen throughout your day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just um going back to your car and it's safe but you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah uh going to bed at night and your body didn't slip off you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it ruined your pillow yeah just taking note of those precious moments like that you know what i'm saying to me that's a life of abundance mm, that you know beautiful gratitude thinking about every yeah. little moment every um, little moment Oh, I love what you're saying. I would love to have you back all here. But first of all, we need right. to know how to stay in contact with you. <laughs> what is coming up for you? I know you didn't drop something special. You mentioned this. So, you know, tell us a little bit about this. <laughs> so I um, I have my book signing coming up on um, January the 27th, which will be held there as a sea experience. Yeah, um, at uh, 838 North Delaware. Okay. And um, my book is, is, is the big thing for me right now. I'm really, really excited about my book. Uh, I've tried to write this book several times, and it's just now happening. So when I say this is my number one focus right now, it is my, fo my focus right now is my mental health in my book. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and just getting it into the hands of as many women as I can get it into the hands uh, of. And, and just hope that even one chapter is life changing. Someone made a post on Facebook today and said, uh, I'm reading your book and it makes me feel like I need to be in a private space. And, and that makes me feel so good because to know that your book, um, uh, makes you know just knowing that my book makes uh people want to feel like i need to this is like a special moment for mm -hmm. someone to say i need to be in a private space mm -hmm. that makes me feel like it's a special moment mm -hmm. a moment that that they want to capture you know something that's not so transactional like oh another book let me just read it no it's like creating a whole experience around reading the book that I love. I love that too. That just goes that right back right to how really you do life. Um, that is beautiful. Uh -huh. That re that self reflection, the experience of being just having that person in the space to open up. I know that is. Oh, life. I love that. I love that. Yes, I love that. So, um, that's my focus right now. Um, and also to um. main focus. I, I was at uh, Carrot House um, East today, and they have a library there. Oh, and I asked, how do I get my book in here? Because um, when I spoke about the domestic violence situation uh, earlier, uh, that's one of my reasons for moving in Carrot House was I just, I just wanted to get away from that. I wanted to get away from the mental abuse and things like that. So that that's how I made my move. And if I can touch the life of one teenager there, you know, one young adult there, or even older adult that's still dealing with those layers that they have to peel back, hey, that's good enough for me. So I would love, you kind of wrapped up on so many things, just telling us that you have this beautiful book, which is it's called 
becoming fearless, right? Becoming whole. Becoming, becoming whole. whole. Okay. Yeah, and it is journey, journey to authenticity. Okay. Oh, journey to authenticity. I love that title because that is all about my brand, girl. <laughs> Being whole, worthy, and ready to receive. And I just love how you're talking about what that means to you and being honest with yourself, oh, yeah. flip back those layers. I wanted to know if you could leave my listeners with one thing that's going to help inspire them and know that they're, this is possible for them too. What would you leave? Oh, wow. <laughs> I, um, a lady said something to me today and I've heard the term before but when she said it, it was just so powerful. And what she is, is she's a lady that I am partnering with uh, to get some of my products in Dubai. And before I left, she said, okay, I'll see you later. I'll see you later, Katina. She's African, right? And she said, her sister said some phrase in French. And I asked her, I said, what does that mean? And she said, oh, it, it, it means it will work. All right. And I was like, wow, I said, I like that. It will work. And, and, and you know what? For the next few days, I'm going to look up that French phrase, right? And I'm going to learn it. Because she, when she said it, it was just so beautiful. And I didn't even know what it meant, right? <laughs> like, but when she said that's what it meant, I was like, oh, that just makes it even better. I love, she said, it will work. It will work. Thank you for that. It will work. So, you know, whatever, um, whatever that means to whoever's listening, you know, it will work. And, you know, hey, take control of your day, own your day, own your vacation, own your time alone. You know, and what I mean by own your time alone is if you have that family member that's always calling you with their problem. And, and their issue turns into, and it, it has started having anniversaries, then um, you're spending your time alone and you're going to own your time alone. Can't talk to you right now. I care about you and I love you. But right now I got to take care of me because if I don't pull my own mask down first and take care of me, I can't answer any more of your calls either because there won't be no more of me. <laughs> so self preservation and it will work i will say that those two things well thank you so much i so appreciate you being here how was it for you <laughs> but listen I, listen this has been an incredible moment it's been an incredible moment i love your spirit i love uh i just love the aura that you carry with you so uh, yeah, keep having that. We need that. <laughs> we need that. We need Marcy's in this world because, honey, if our cup is halfway through, uh, full, a uh, look, a uh, quarter will be in full. You know, up to the top of the rim or whatever. You can go I hook up with Marcy, and your cup overflows. Okay, <laughs> it is overflowing. Yeah. So, thank you for being you. I really Thank agree. you so much for that. In the Finally Be podcast, I'm just so appreciative of having this dynamic woman on today. And you guys got to get out there and get with her. She's having this book signing. All these beautiful things are coming about, you know, owner, founder, all the stuff she does with all you guys. She's yeah. that will connect with her. Um, finally, be just means just connecting with yourself, knowing who you are, allowing yourself to do what is possible because it is possible for you to create the life worth living. If you know someone that would benefit from this episode, please share, comment. I love connecting to new people. This has been the Finally Be Podcast. Create the life that you know you would love to live. I'm your host. Grayson, the intuitive wholeness coach.